One of the things that I absolutely love about gardening is that nothing stays the same. Plants are always changing, the garden's always moving and changing, plants die, some need to be removed, others have to be transplanted. And what I love is having garden areas that I can do something new every year. Now, one of my favorite garden elements is something called the mixed border, where you take woody plants that become the skeleton and the scaffolding of the landscape, and then you incorporate herbaceous perennials and annuals to give you the color and texture that you desire. Now, along this rack wall this year, my wife and I decided what we wanted to do was create a small cut flower garden, put in seeds that'll grow into flowers that we can cut, put in vases, bring inside and enjoy, but also attract pollinators outside and enjoy these plants when we walk through the garden or when we sit in the sunroom. So if you come with me, you walk through this path by the rock wall, you can see that there are some permanent plants. There's a weeping boxwood. There on the left, little red flowers of a perennial salvia. But then right down here on the left, you can see some baling twine and some, some bamboo stakes where I'm putting in a little scaffolding to help support the, the plants that come up and keep them from flopping. I've got zinnia and I've got cosmos. Here you can see the zinnia that I planted from seed are coming there, starting to bud up. And then these smaller ones down here are cosmos. Here's a new plant that I'm finding very unique and interesting. It's a plant called honeywort. It has a bluish green colored leaf and then it's going to produce purple and blue colored flowers that can be used in arrangements but also cascade down on the wall. So there's that area there. We've incorporated some other plants as well. Take a look here you, where you can see the plants have done very well. I've got um, David Phlox in the background. Not a good cut but here's some more honeywort. But over there I've got lots of zinnias and if you look you can see that see that little delicate red flower that's called tassel flower and believe it or not the literature says that should make a good cut as well. Not only that but I've got some black eyed Susans. Black eyed Susans are always a great thing to add to the um, to the vases for your cuts. Black eyed Susans come all summer long keep cutting and deadheading them and they'll come back. So that's another plant that that I've got there and then I've just learned, because I've tried putting it in, I've just learned that bee balm, and if you look back there, you can see I've got a big planting of bee balm down in front of that Japanese maple and that evergreen dogwood. Bee balm is a fantastic plant for attracting bees, bumblebees and whatnot, but bee balm also cuts well and works well in vases. I've used it with the Black Eyed Susans, and I've also used it with the zinnias. So there's a plant I'm excited about incorporating into my vases as well. And then over there on the left-hand side, you see right, right over there is another um, Black Eyed Susan called Denver Daisy. It has a dark center and makes a great cut flower as well. I also have a couple areas around back that are filled with uh, a Black Eyed Susans that have reseeded from last year and I'll use those for, for cuts as well. So here's, here's just a few last details relative to a cut flower garden that you want to remember. When you cut plants to bring inside in a vase, please do it early in the morning. Bring a small bucket with you and when you cut them, put them in the bucket and then when you get inside, recut the stems and, and put them in the vase. Don't ever cut during the day or at the end of the day because the plants will have experienced some water stress and that's not always a good thing. So first thing in the morning you want to do that. And guys, remember, when you do cut flowers, if you want to increase their vase life, that's post-harvest physiology, if you want to increase their vase life, then remember to do this. Every two days, change out the water and recut the stems. And if you do that, you'll be in really good shape. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we finish up this little session is how you can add greenery to your cuts. What I've got growing on the north side of my house, and let me move around here quite slowly, are ferns. This whole north side of my house is inundated with Japanese painted fern and another number of different kinds of ferns. You can use ferns to add greenery to your arrangements, and it's not difficult, difficult to do at all. Let me show you what I mean. I don't even have my pruners with me, but you can come in here and you can, you can break off a frond like that. There we go. And then this frond here, can, can, you can take off those bottom sections here and then cut it and then incorporate it into your vase. 
And so by doing this, you can add three or four of these into a, an arrangement and add that nice greenery and get some good contrast and good foliage texture. So that's just another little tip. If you've got some ferns growing in your garden that you can use for, for greenery for those. So that's about the size of it. You can have cut flowers all summer long, but also encourage pollinators in your own garden. Just make sure that you plant these plants plant the seeds in real sunny locations where they'll be able to, to to continue to grow the zinnia what's great about them is the more you cut them the more they flower so think about maybe taking a small sunny area in your own garden and creating a cut flower garden where you can enjoy your flowers not only outside but also inside as well so keep checking the youtube we'll have more garden tour updates as the summer progresses